Good morning, friends. I'm so glad you're here today. I miss you. I wonder who you're missing today. Someone in your family, a friend, maybe a teacher, maybe like me, you're missing many people. I also wonder what gives you comfort when you're missing the ones you love. Maybe a photograph, a cozy blanket. How about a garden? In today's gospel story, the risen Jesus gives his followers the good news that even when they can no longer see or touch Jesus, his love remains with them forever. Jesus promised to send them and us a companion, the Holy Spirit, a new way of being with Jesus and practicing the presence of God. This week I'm going to share part of a story called Oji Shan's Gift by Chiri Yugaki and Genevieve Sims. It's a story about how one little girl, Mayumi, and her Oji Shan, which is her beloved grandpa, find a new way to continue their love for one another when they can no longer be together in their special Japanese garden. When Mayomi Van Horten was born, her grandfather built her a garden. It sat behind a tiny brown house nearly halfway around the world. It was unlike any other garden she knew. There were no tulips or daffodils or daisies or carrots or cabbages or peas. Oji Shan had made the garden out of stones. Big ones, little ones, and ones in between. Some reminded Naomi of turtles. Others stood like mountains, rugged and tall. Around the border, Ojishan had planted pine and maple, boxwood, and bamboo. And in just the right spot was a sheltered bench where they could share onigari bento packed in a lacquered box. Every summer, Mayomi spent two months with her Ojishan, and with each year, her ability to care for the garden grew. She learned that moss on a rock was a gift of time not to be washed away with a hose, that weeding was more pleasant in the morning, and that clipping shrubs to look like clouds was the, was the best of reasons to prune. Raking gravel, though, was what Naomi enjoyed most. She loved how the tiny rocks chattered as they passed through the rake's wooden teeth. She loved the different patterns she could make, wavy, zigzag, and straight. But rings like ripples in a pond were her favorite. And when she was done, Naomi and Ojishan would sit and enjoy the results of her efforts in happy silence. Then one summer, everything changed. And this is the part of the story we'll skip over, but Naomi and her Oji Shan could no longer be together in their very special garden because grandpa had to move out of the house where the garden was. We'll pick up on the part of the story though where Naomi made her Oji Shan his own little garden inside of a bento box. Oji Shan took her hand and gripped it tight. Arigato, Mayomi Chan, he said. Honto no arigato, which means thank you very much. Back home, Naomi unpacked her suitcase and set aside several small bags. Then she took out her tin and emptied it of her treasures. The sandy gravel went in first, followed by stones of various sizes placed just so. She added a pine cone next and then a leaf before patting the gravel flat. Then using her pinky as a rake, Naomi carefully made smooth, even rings around the three largest rocks 
And although the garden was much smaller and the sound was much softer, if she closed her eyes and listened, she was certain she could still hear the pebbles soothing chatter. I wonder if you'd like to make your own rock garden like Mayumi and this one. All you need is a shallow container and any kind of sand and rocks in different shapes and sizes. And you can use your finger as a rake. I wonder if your rock garden will open up space at home like it did in mine to reflect on God's creation, to feel Jesus' loving presence and to know the companionship of our friend, the Holy Spirit. God coming close to us and us coming close to God in the love and generosity we offer each other. Amen.